Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the RDFL Footy Show, our special interleague edition. And once again, we're out on the road. Excuse the background noise, because there's business going on as we're here today. We're here at the Telstra store here in the Sunbury Square Shopping Centre. Joe Santoro and his team making us feel very warm and welcome today. Of course, fantastic partners for a long time of the Riddle District Football and Netball League and in particular the interleague programs are on the yeah, back of the Yeah, on the back, on the so, back. Don't forget. <laughs> Sean Kelly's my name. Joining me as always, Chris Yandy. Yandy, welcome, mate. Thanks, mate. How are you feeling this week, mate? It's uh, got the week off in terms of uh, no Arnie for now footy this week. Correct, but that doesn't mean there's a week off, mate, because there's no. a huge game coming up this weekend against the Albany Footy League, a league that we, we played not all that long ago and it was one of the great games and it was a one-point result, so... Hopefully there's a little bit of revenge coming back for that game at Romsey a couple of years back. Absolutely, mate. I've been stitching up the blokes down there saying, well, if it was a 100-point win, no one would care. But the fact it was Correct. a one-point win, still daggers through the heart. So We'll talk about interleague more throughout the show, though, because as always, we'll talk about our three main talking points from the week. And talking point number one, from the upset win of the season today, your Wood and Eskett Hawks, Andy, getting out and about and knocking over the Sunbury Kangaroos. Yeah, it was just an extraordinary game of, uh, of footy, really. Haven't uh, haven't experienced anything like that in quite some time. I think the last time the Hawks actually beat the Kangaroos was in 2007 in a preliminary final. That's what the old folks say, so they're probably bang on there and we ended up, well, I'll say we, but uh, Hawks ended up, ended up winning a premiership, so yeah. <laughs> we're not talking premierships just yet, but yeah, exactly. uh, no, it, was a, it was a really good win and probably surprising, in fact, as well, because Sunbury Kangaroos had a very strong lineup mm -hmm. um, and the big guns didn't buy it. Wood End had their usual lineup. They've, uh, they're still missing a few players for injury. Yep. Their best player goes down in the first half and they still continue on the momentum. Be careful speaking ill of the Sunbury Kangaroos where we are here oh, as well, no, of course. No. Telstra Sunbury, <laughs> fantastic partners of the Sunbury Kangaroos and of course the Rupert's Wood Footy Club as well. But interesting game, the Kangaroos now, that they've got two losses on the board. Obviously one of them we know wasn't a, a loss, but it was. Yeah. But it puts them in a kind of an interesting place going into the interleague break. It certainly does. And look, they're, they're an outstanding side, so you probably expect them to finish top three, top, top four quite confidently. Mm. But I remember speaking to Jeff Andrews from Macedon uh, just the other week, and when Rupert's would beat real, it's sort of like, well, that throws a cat amongst the pigeons. Yeah. Well, now would end the Hesket beating Sunbury, that throws a cat even more amongst the pigeons. Now, does. anyone can beat anyone on any given day. Well, I'm beating Lansfield, we didn't say that one. No, I did not say that one. We'd, um, and that uh, the pies sort of got away, and the Tigers mm. ended up coming back. And so, but it was a close one, as predicted. But I think for the Hawks, it's really good confidence for them and the Kangaroos. Well, they know they've got to bounce back from that. One of the highlights for me on the day is actually seeing Ross Slight, who is a new coach, second yep. season, spending a lot of good time with Jared Dixon as the players were celebrating on the field mm -hmm. and, um, and maybe learning a few things and, and picking his brains. And that's good. A good camaraderie between the coaches, but a good young coach learning from an experienced coach. Yeah, he's a good man, Slighty, and very well done to everybody down at the Woodend Heskett Football and Netball Club. Talking point number two, we've talked about them as talking points for a couple of weeks now, but yep. on the other side of the ledger, Broadford have now got their first win for the season, and 96 or 94 pointer, thank you very much, yeah. up against Romsey, <laughs> have the sleeping giants awoken. I think so. The Cam Dawson steps out, kicks six goals in his... Uh, of course he's his going offer. to do that against Romsey. <laughs> have his best game of the season by a street. Absolutely, and that's good confidence for, for him. He's really needed that since going to his uh, new club. Um, I really don't know what to, whether how it goes with Broadford here. I mean, to get that good win is, is a good positive team. We know Romsey aren't the strong side they have been in the past, so let's hope, hopefully they can back it up because it was a good solid four, four quarter performance and they set it up in the uh, in the second term. They kicked seven goals to one, and that was all she wrote. It was a, I think about forty points ahead, and that was it. And also, a fantastic win by Broadford. Talking point number three: How can we be here at the Telstra Store in Sunbury without, of course? getting a chance to promote our fantastic sponsor. Obviously, fantastic establishment here. Joe Santoro and his team been long-time supporters of them. We're going to have a chat with the guys from Telstra Store Sunbury very, very shortly. So that's our third talking point. The fantastic support that Telstra Store Sunbury has given the league over a number of years. And, of course, fantastic support of the Interleague campaign. Absolutely. We, uh, the Interleague program is growing strong, going in leaps and bounds, and we wouldn't be here without the support. Exactly right. So we're going to catch up with the team here at Telstra Store Sunbury very shortly. Once again, talking point number three here at the Telstra store in summary for this show. And joining me is the number one man down here at the Telstra store, Joe Santoro. Joe, thanks for joining us today, mate. And once again, thank you for your support of the Riddle District Football and Netball League. All good. It's great to be part of the um, RDF Manel. 
Um, supporting the Inter League is a um, big thing for us. Um, we want to make sure that we support all the teams in the RDFL. And uh, being a local uh, local business, it's um, always good to uh, give back to the local community. Now you've been on board for a few years now. Obviously a fantastic supporter of the league, but primarily the package centres around the Inter League teams. What is it about the Inter League that really gets you on board and really gets, is that's what you said you want to throw your support behind? I think, um, quite simply, um, providing support to the uh, the best of the best. So yep. making sure that, um, you know, a, as a, a uh, as a league, we're supporting those that um, are taking their time to uh, represent the league, mm -hmm. and um, you know, um, someone needs to support those guys. And being a local, it's a good opportunity for us to support all the teams throughout the entire region, as yep. opposed to just one or two teams. Because you do support the local clubs here in Sunbury as well, but this league partnership is an extension to reach out to everybody and say, hey, come down here, we're in the geographical centre of the league, we're here to help everybody, talk to your businesses, talk to your contacts, talk to everybody, and get them down here and get a really good deal that's not obviously just going to help them, but also their clubs and by extension the league. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, we started out seven years ago and we supported the uh, Sunbury Kangaroos, mm -hmm. that crew. And um, you know we're, we're sponsoring the Rupo um, football team as well, yep. netball team as well. Um, and um, we just thought we needed to um, ensure that the wider group and community was also um, supported by the store. Um, we have local presence here. We've been around for a long time, as you said. Um, we support all the local um, consumers. Um, we're the point of presence. We're the local experts, and um, you know we plan to stick around for a long time. The Telstra Store Sunbury Cup between Rupertswood and the Sunbury Kangaroos started off in 20, 2015, I believe it was. Yeah. I think we were down there at Rupertswood that day for Dan Gregory and the boys. This year you got a one point result straight up. Pretty interesting start for it. Yeah, that was uh, a good game. Um, look, the theory of that cup is being the first game of the year between the two clubs that are supporting Sunbury. Yep. Didn't quite get off to that um, this year, unfortunately, but um, with the support of the uh, RDFL. Uh, RD NFL, we'll uh, get that up takes again. A, it takes a while to get used to, it, doesn't it? Tongue twister. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll get that up again um, last year. It was a good game. It's um, yep. great to see uh, the camaraderie between those two. And um, it flew, uh, you know, we continued at grand final last year and uh, flew on again. So um, you know, hopefully the two teams have a strong year and get to play some finals and might uh, pair up against each other again. Now you're going to have a bit of a say in what happens in this interleague week as well. Obviously, jump presentation on Thursday night down at Clark Oval. You're going to be down there handing out the jump to the players. Tell us what that means to you to do, be able to do something like that. Well, look, being a, a kid that's played footy all my life, I think that uh, I never had the opportunity to play in the league. I wasn't mm. that good. So seeing um, the guys that get the opportunity to play that, I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's a great... Um, it's a great honour to be um, to be selected, and I think that um, you know the ultimate goal should want it should be to play the high standard you possibly can. So that was a great game last year, and um, we get down there as a group and we hand out the jumpers, and it's great to meet the players. It's um, third time we'll do it this year, so we've seen the common faces come in again, but it's yep. great to see some of the new folks get um, selected as well. So yeah. it's great to be part of it. 2014, we were sitting next to you at the Romsey Park when we played at the Alberton Footy League and lost by one point. Obviously. Same opposition this week. Team have changed around a little bit. How do you see the guys going? Look, I'm, I haven't been in touch with who, who's in and who's out. Yep. So, um, um, you know, hopefully, uh, regardless of who you get on the park, I know they put in 100%, and, um, you know, we're, we're in for a big show this, this year. Um, again, you know, we, we're not sure what we're up against, but I know when the boys stick together, it's great to see the camaraderie between the guys that are very competitive week on week. So, um, yeah, I, I, mean, I don't think I'll get there this year. I think it's a way, isn't it? Yeah, it's at Inverloch this year, so yeah. it's a bit of a drive. Yeah, so it's a, it's a helicopter drive down there. So. It certainly is. Yeah. But, uh, look forward to it. Obviously, the business that you've got here, the Telstra Store in Sunbury, a fantastic business, right in the heart of Sunbury here at Sunbury Square Shopping Centre. Give us a little bit of what you can do for the public and what you can do for RDFL fans and their teams out there. Yeah, I, I guess um, we sponsor the local community, and, and the whole objective behind that is to get people to come down and shop local and um, invest local. And the more they invest in our business, the more we invest in the league, the more yep. we invest in the teams. Um, we have a wide range of products that we support here. Um, you know, we once were historically a mobile phone store and, mm -hmm. and things are so different now. So we're much in, more than that now, isn't are, it? You know, we're an MBN store, we're yep. an ADSL store, we're a business store, we're a consumer store, we're an IT support store. So yep. um, there's a lot that we can do for the uh, local community. And um, my advice to anybody is make sure you come into the store as your first point of contact. Support us and we continue to support um, the wider league and our local clubs as well. It's the best way to do it, folks. Get down there and support somebody that supports your league. 
They'll give you the best deal going around. It also saves you shopping around as well because Joseph and the team, fantastic supporters of the league, have been for a long time and have been known to always give RDFL supporters the best deals. Just come down, mention the, mention your RDFL team, have a bit of a chat to the friendly staff down here and they'll make sure that you're looked after with all sorts of data, with all sorts of accessories, whatever you need to get you mobile. Joe, thanks for joining us, mate. Thank you so much once again for your support of the RDFL and in particular the interleague competition. Great, thank you. Um, glad to have you down here and um, we look forward to a great game on the weekend and um, look forward to seeing the result. Joseph Santoro from the Telstra Store in Sunbury joining us here on the RDFL Free Show. It's time to head back. We'll have a chat about this week's interleague game. Joe Santoro from the Telstra Store in Sunbury. Great to have them on board once again. And as we said and as we spoke to Joe about, one of the main components of their partnership revolves around interleague. It's the naming rights to the interleague teams and this is the week for it because it's interleague week. The WorkSafe Community Championships this weekend. The Riddle District Football and Netball League taking on the Alberton Football and Netball League. Two years ago, this game was played at the Romsey Park. It was a one-point result. Last year, of course, the RDFL thrown into competition late, taken up a few runs, said try and beat the big boys, and they did. Come back down the runs. Yeah, it's Interesting one. I know it's a fight that we tried to have, and I say we, obviously, being yeah. a part of the establishment at the time, tried to have the fight to say, well, hang on, we've knocked over the Nepean League, put us in that spare ranking spot that's up there. It didn't happen for whatever reason. Now it's back to the drawing board, and you can't, you, you can't just capitalise and sit back and say, well, hang on. We're now back down in 26 or whatever the ranking is. Just got to go out and beat whoever is on the park and a league that beat you a year, two years ago. Yeah, it's, it's funny how it's sort of worked and um, and sort of the feel around this game as well is, okay, the Riddle League beat Nepean last year by 13 points or whatever whatever it was. That was an extraordinary win in itself. But the, but the one that they're still talking about, despite all that, is losing to Alberton by one point. That's Correct. the one because, as you say, it influences the rankings. Yep. The way things could, went last year, unfortunately, it didn't. We yeah. would have loved to, but love it, to. here we are. We've, uh, we've and we're, we're revisiting things here. We've got a new team on the paddock. We're ready to go. And I think uh, to see Matty Power out there again is going to be outstanding as a, as a great coach. And he's got some good support as well. And he's done a fantastic job. He's fourth year in charge of the league team now since we came back into in league play in 2013. And the, the work that he does with the team and puts in, not just obviously in this week leading up to it, it's, it's the five, six weeks beforehand where you're going around, you're looking at players, you're trying to pick a right team, you're scouting an opposition. I think we've got some fans on camera with us here as well and getting around and, getting around and obviously making that happen. Mm -hmm. It's really, really hard work that he does. It's not just a one week kind of thing. Uh, it isn't, and uh, it's a good preparation that's sort of gone in as well. And uh, look, the under 18 and a half, so the under 18 head into this uh, game with a little bit of form as well. They didn't get the job done against Ballarat, but they showed a good competitive improvement and a good quality list to choose from. Yep, and of course, that was a Bailey kid that was behind us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, the better one we hear. The better one, that's what he's telling us. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the team that the Demon's going to put onto the park this weekend, you've had a close look at it, obviously. If anybody knows anything about the league, it's you. You're all, all across everything. How do you think this team's going to stack up compared to teams that we've put on the park in previous years? I think this team's a little bit more balanced. There's a lot more, a lot, lot more speed. And again, we've spoken about in recent weeks, we've got Jason Cook. He was effectively uh, emergency last year, just missed out. And uh, he's in the form of his life. Well, he's not put a foot wrong in the 12 months since. He, he kicked three goals uh, on the weekend against Rock Bank, and he's been doing that consistently over the last few weeks, getting some good form. I think Kenny's nicknamed the Enforcer on Highlands FM. I think he's going to be that impact player again this year. And he, he, I know he'd be, he was so filthy missing out last year. And at the end of the day, the fact that we as a competition beat Nepean, a good side on the paddock, I think you could take great satisfaction that he missed out and uh, a, a good team had to win. You look at did. that though, and the whole league brought themselves up for that game against Nepean last year. It was almost like we had a point to prove going up and taking the higher ranked opposition and everyone rose up for the occasion. Will Demon be able to do that this year? Road game, obviously, a fair travel out to Inverloch. It's not just around the corner. Yeah. Will he be able to do that, do you feel? Well, the conditions are going to be tough because it, it, for those who have been following the VFL and watching Williamstown ground, it's very much a similar scenario. It's right there on the beach, so yep. you do get that breeze. If we do get a bit of wind on the day, it's going to cause a little bit of havoc. They're missing one X factor, unfortunately. He's not in this uh, competition anymore. He's playing up in the quaffle. That's Zach Sarr. He had a really big impact last uh, year, especially Chris Petora as well. Can't forget him too, so we're probably taking out that little bit of pace, but we've got a little grunt in the team. That being said, who do you feel could fill in as the X factor instead of Sardi and Chris? They've been fantastic in league players in the last few years. Uh, well, I don't know. I'll perhaps maybe um, if Blake Levery gets in there for the Hawks, we've seen him in the last couple of weeks, and he's played a league above himself. And I think uh, he's uh, he's just showed some great speed and a terrific ball user, great uh, 
can kick big goals. Yep. Almost a bit like Jason Cook as well. If the two of them are firing, then it's great news for us because they're big goal kicking midfielders. And of course, Nipper Wright, the great man himself, he thrives on this kind of football as well. He has been the best interleague performer we've had over the last three years combined without a shadow of a doubt. And expecting big things from Nip Nip again this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and Joffa is sort of over at the Cats has used him in a different way this year. Started him off half back and in a couple of occasions where they've been behind, they've put him forward. He's kicked a couple of goals and he's set them up. So hopefully, for our sake, the demon Matty Power is able to use him in that aspect as well if need to. But you know, with all going well, I know he's so filthy about that one point loss a couple of years ago. I don't think we're going to be in that position and we're going to be in a chance to uh, to win and, and, and go ahead and, and win pretty well. Not too many people more connected in the footy world than yourself, uh, young Christopher. Uh, what can know, you tell mate. us about the team that we're playing this weekend, the Albion Footy League, and the differences between what we saw in 2014 at Romsey and what we'll see this weekend at Inverloch? Well, I spoke to Barry on uh, 3MM. The great man. There, there, good old Baz. Baz 3MM. Yep, so he's doing well down there, and uh, Jimmy Brosnan will probably be involved as well. Of and, course. Uh, from what I hear, um, they're going to be a very similar lineup compared to uh, last time a couple yep. of years ago, and they um, they had a couple of small players that uh, did the damaging job. So hopefully uh, we're able to sort of rectify that, and uh, they're going to be up against some good competition. So I'm looking forward to it, and looking forward to their ball component as well. And uh, look, it's just going to be a really big day. It's going to be a huge day, and of course those that can't make it down to Inverloch, it is a fair trip yeah. after all. Yeah. How can they stay in contact with what's happening? They can stay in contact by listening to Highlands FM. They of can course. jump on highlandsfm.org.au or listen to 100.7 FM around the uh, the region. Uh, I'm going to be uh, piggybacking there, the, the team over there Absolutely. for a change. So we're looking forward to that. So uh, it's going to be a great experience. We've got a big truck down there and yep. uh, good atmosphere. We'll be down there nice and early, well before the under 18 start. Nice one. And uh, probably get the Staying team. Staying the night? Uh, well, that's, that's the beauty, mate. It's family connections. Yes. Spunk's mum lives uh, about half an hour away, ah, so lovely. a weekend we away go. where I said, but I'm working all day Saturday. Beautiful. I'm loving it. That's it's okay, and the, the bride still gets to see her mum, so it's it's, it's win-win. It, absolutely. It's a, it's a great opportunity where footy actually creates a happy environment in the, uh, the, the marriageal situation. And we're going to have more interlake content on the website throughout the course of the week, obviously, with training Tuesday and then the jump presentation at Clark Oval on Thursday. I'm making him sing for his supper this week. I'm going to get him out. <laughs> on the video camera and get around Matty Power and some of the boys in the interleague squad and we'll have some exclusive content on the RDFL website towards the end of the week. That's all the time we've got here for the RDFL footy show this week. Andy, best of luck this weekend, mate. Enjoy in the vlog. Oh, thanks, mate. It's going to be great to get down there and get the tan on. It's going to be 18 degrees and probably what a lot of... Get the tan on. Get the really? tan on. It's footy season. Seriously. <laughs> Please, don't give me that one. Great to have your company once again on the RDFL Footy Show. Thanks once again to Joe Santaro and the whole team here at the Telstra Shore in Sunbury that are busy connecting people behind us to the world of the NBN and all sorts of different connections as well. I think phones, iPads, everything like that. And they're all Telstra yeah. products as well, so we're absolutely loving that. So thanks to the team once again for having us, and thanks to you for joining us once again on the RDFL Footy Show. We'll be back next week with all of the talking points from the Interleague weekend as well as a full roundup of what's going to happen in Round 6 in the RDFL next weekend. We'll see you then.